Welcome everyone to the hills of Southern California. We are just outside the town of Ramona. It's X Games 2021, and we are at Axel Hodge's compound that he calls Slayground as it plays host to Moto X Freestyle. Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy Coleman sitting in the booth alongside Mike Mason. We've got Jack Matrani out in the field. And well, Mike, I'm excited about the return of Moto X Freestyle here to the X Games. But coming into this, let's talk about your defending champ from 2019, Rob Adelberg. It took him nine starts, but he finally walked away with X Games gold there in Minneapolis. Yeah, Rob's been one of those guys just progressing nonstop. And, you know, 2019 in Minneapolis finally paid off for him. There you can see a huge front flip, no footer. I mean, Front flips were, a, you know, not even a, a thought there when we first started freestyling. For him to throw a couple on his run, land everything clean, walk away with the gold. Not only did he have the front flip, but he also had three different variations of it in that run. But another big story is that we are here outside again. It's been a minute since we've had freestyle motocross outside. You got to go all the way back to Austin X Games in 2016. And what an absolutely surreal setting it is out here at Slayground. And with the ability to be outside, that means you can make a much bigger course. And actually, course designer Matt McCall estimates this course here, Mike, is almost twice as big as what we saw the years that we had Moto X Freestyle contested when we were inside U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. But we have a field of eight out here in Moto X Freestyle. We talked about your defending champ, Rob Adelberg. Who else do you like in this field, Mike? I'm going to go with the, my sleeper pick, Taka Higashino. He looked great in practice yesterday. We know he has a ton of big tricks. This course is going to benefit some experience. And, yeah, like I said, Taka looked great yesterday. Yeah, we actually also have a massive jump. There's a 105-foot gap out here on this course. We haven't seen something that big in a Moto X freestyle course of X Games in about seven years. So we started off with an X Games rookie. This is Benny Richards from Australia. It says X Games 2021 is actually his first real competition. Oh, not a good start. Not a good start for Benny, man. That That's hard. You know, we sat around. We had a... Just a minor delay there, and you know, he's got the nerves. He's 20 years old and disappointed, but he looks like he's okay. He'll have another stab at it. So gets up from that virtually unscathed, but let's see what happened here in the replay. Yeah, just not enough juice. Came up a little short, a little under-rotated. Like I said, that crash could get really bad for him to just kind of get bucked off the front there and, and give it another go is going to be all right. Uh, brutal way to start your X Games, though. Yeah, that could have been a lot worse, but it was good to see him get up and uh, walk away from that one. So uh, some issues there with the bars and the flip levers getting bent up a little bit there. So do some tweaking on that, and hopefully uh, we'll get him back in round number two. You do get two runs out here in Moto X Freestyle. It's the better of your two runs to count. Those runs are 75 seconds in length. And, well, Mike, let's talk about what are the judges going to be looking for in the span of that 75 seconds? They're going to be looking for, first things first, the biggest tricks, the front flips, the double back uh, variations. But then you also have some jumps on this course. You know, the 105 ramp, we got two super kickers, uh, 75's coming down the hill. I'm sure these guys are going to want to see a little bit of use of course as well. So we move on to our next competitor who hails from France. This is David Ronaldo. Now, David Ronaldo was an X Games Minneapolis in 2019. Lit everybody up by walking away with best trick gold at that event. Yeah, Ronaldo's got so much style. You know, right side up tricks, I, he's probably one of my favorite guys. Nice vario right there. That, he's coming out swinging. You know, he was a little nervous when I talked to him after practice. Said it was a fun course to ride, but a really challenging course to put a run together. But so far, he's looking great. So just under the one minute mark here, he's got 50 plus seconds to go here. So far, so good. Looking pretty solid out here in this first of two outings. And we got to remember, these guys haven't been in this situation in a couple years now, you know. So for, for all these guys to come out, just start throwing down the runs, I'm sure the, the adrenaline's going there, trying a little rock solid backflip. Um, it, this is one of those times where Dave's got a good run going. He's just really got to control his breathing, calm down, and, and stick the rest of his run. He's got 30 seconds left. Excellent shot there on the overhead cam of the rock solid. Just under 30 seconds left to go here. One thing I did notice, I, I don't know if he ever got to it, but David didn't hit the 105 ramp yesterday. And, you know, I, like I said, the judges are definitely going to favor that ramp a little bit. I mean, if you're flipping 105 feet compared to 75 feet and doing your tricks, you know, that's, that, that's a big deal. So I'd like to see him get that ramp in before this runs over. Coming down to the final couple of seconds here, looks like he's going to have time for one more hit if he's able to get under power and get on the approach here with the one-hand takeoff here. I like that. That was pretty creative there. One-handed takeoffs. Uh, Nate Adams actually used to do those a lot in X Games, but never with a, a seat grab backflip to follow it up. 
So you said it earlier, David Ronaldo coming out swinging. He came out with some heat and some fire there early on in that run. Puts together a full 75 seconds. All of this after time here. I don't know if he realizes the clock has expired, but let's take a look at some replays from Mr. Ronaldo's first outing. Yeah, right there, an awesome body burial. Um, I can't tell you how technical that is to spin around. And as you could see, actually, when he was going up to the ramp there, it was there's a shadow on that ramp. And that'll mess with the guys a little bit, too. You can't really see the transition of the ramp, so you're kind of just more or less going off feel at that point. So, again, it's two 75-second runs. It's the best of your two runs that counts out here. We'll hopefully put you on the podium out here at X Games 2021. David Ronaldo, that's a great spot to start off with. That'll put him in 88.33, put him in that top spot. You got Harry Bink coming your way next, another Australian. We actually have uh, several Aussies in the mix out here. Harry Bink is stoked to be here at Slayground, but let's have a look at his own personal setup. He has back home in Australia in this Monster Energy Athlete profile. Hi, my name's Harry Bink, 27 years old, and I live on the Gold Coast, Australia. 2021 X Games, I will be competing in freestyle motocross and best trick. As soon as the downtime hit, I knew there was no better time than to rebuild my whole compound. I used all my saved money and I spent every cent I had, including borrowing money, to build my dream setup. I purchased a big airbag, got all the ramps there, concrete run-ups, generators, I did absolutely everything. It was massive commitment, it took me four months to build, but now I have my dream freestyle compound to perfect my tricks and work towards my dream runs to do at X Games. And Harry's always a wild one to watch. You never know what to expect out of this guy. He settled for a fifth place finish in freestyle at X Games Minneapolis back in 2019. So here we go, Harry Bink in for his first of two attempts. Yeah, nice one-handed knack back flip there to start off. I kind of always like when you haven't competed in a while, starting with you know two or three tricks that you know you're comfortable with. You don't want to come out with something big, mess it up, blow your whole run. So. Harry getting started here, kind of wasting a little bit of time right here. I'd like to see him jumping back down the hill to, to get that extra one or two jumps in. Oh, oh that was massive. <laughs> massive double back can-can. He's looking great. He's, you know, he's putting that compound that he rebuilt to, to good use right now. Doing that one early in the run, too. He's still got 40 seconds left to go here. And, and I like what he's doing right here. Like I said, he's got some tricks that he's comfortable with mixing it up. And then, you know, you got to throw your big banger tricks in there as well. This, once again, is my only downfall with Harry's run is you, you've got to maximize all these jumps. You know, with 75 seconds out here, this course is so big, you don't really have time to, to kind of gap jumps like that. Also plays into that use of course factor as well with the judges. So another double backflips. So you get two double backflips. Coming in hot. In Coming in hot. Oh, <laughs> no. Harry, he's out in the poison oak. Off course. Oh, man. He... <laughs> He had a good run going there, just a little under-rotated on the double flip. Grabbing his back a little bit. That's, this course is, I mean, it's a massive course, but the runouts are tight on it. And as you can see, they're just that little, little bit off on the landing and send him out in the bushes. Well, again, good to see him get spring up from that one rather quickly and walking away. Yeah, right here starting his run. Good extension, grabbing the boot there. Like I said, he started his run perfect. You know, just get, get a couple tricks in there you're confident with. Huge double backflip can. I can't tell you how hard double backflip variations are. I mean, to spin a 250-pound motorcycle twice is already hard enough. And then as you throw you know, a limb off the bike, that's when it kind of slows down. Right there under rotated, couldn't get stopped. Axel's got jumps out on the, the back of the property there, and the bike's gone. He hit that little kicker right there. Might have got a lot, he could have launched a lot further into the weeds over there. It's good that he hit the eject button when he did. But again, hopefully he's OK and be able to take his second run right there over there talking to X Games Medical right now. But Good to see him get up and walk away under his own power. However, even with the slip up at the end, that's still going to give Harry an 85 flat, so that'll put him in that number two spot right now behind David Ronaldo as the uh, comp crew has to go fish that bike out of the weeds over there. And this goes back to what I just said earlier is, you know, two out of the three guys so far have crashed. And, you know, when you don't compete for two years, then all of a sudden you're thrown into an X Games environment. Man, that's a lot of pressure for these guys. Um, Harry did look solid. It was That was just a, a small error with no run out, but... You know, I'd expect some minor mistakes from these guys in these first runs. 
You know, I also have to talk about the travel time, too, for a lot of these guys. I mean, you're flying halfway across the world to get here from Australia. Plus, you have to travel with all this gear. So how much does that factor into practice time that you actually have on course once you get in country? That's huge, you know. And Harry had to come here, build a bike. Uh, same with Benny Richards. You know, like Harry said, he built his compound. He was practicing there every day. And then you come here, you're jet lagged. You're not sleeping well. You're on a kind of a different motorcycle, even though it's the same bike. You're hitting different ramps. So... For these Australians, Europeans to come over here and, you know, start to stick some runs is pretty impressive. So he seems to be okay for the most part over there, just kind of wincing a little bit and grabbing the backside as he chats it up with X Games Medical. But again, I mean, even with that slip up at the end, he had a little bit of time on the clock. I mean, that still nets him in the mid-80s right there and slides him into that number two spot behind Mr. Ronaldo. Yeah, as long as he's all good for a second run, that should give him some confidence knowing that, you know, missing a couple jumps, he's still right there. Well, hopefully uh, his bike will be okay and he'll be able to continue. We'll have to see uh, if that holds true for both him and Benny Richards. But we move on to a German competitor here. This is Luke Ackerman. As you see Harry walking off right there, he's going to go sit in the rider staging area and wait this one out for the rest of round one. And hopefully he continue into can continue into round number two. I wonder if he wishes he had a jersey on right there. After <laughs> I was going to say, it is <laughs> really, really hot out here. So interesting choice right now. Uh, to, I mean, you got pretty sunburnt when you are out here watching practice yesterday. Uh, interesting selection to go shirtless out here for that run. Yeah, he's Hey, that's Harry's style. It is. Wouldn't be Harry if he didn't wear or if he wore a jersey. Uh, you can see he's definitely feeling that one by the facial expressions there as he walks that one off. So, yeah, talking about the temperature out here, it's already 79 degrees early on. Uh, the wind isn't a factor as of right now, which is a good thing. Wind is not your friend when you're out here doing freestyle motocross. So let's talk about Luke Ackerman. He missed X Games Minneapolis in 2019 due to injury. So it's been a couple of years since we've seen him in competition out here at the X Games. He was the youngest to land a double backflip on a motorcycle. He did that in October of 2017 at the ripe old age of 19. Luke's such a fun rider to watch. He's still a young kid. He goes for it. This is exactly what everyone likes to watch about him. The flattest 360 that's ever been done. It's, it's not such a, a flip style three. He kind of just slides the bike off the ramp and so far looking solid. Just calm, cool, and collected. Two hits in here. Again, two runs. They're 75 seconds in length. It's the best run that counts that's going to hopefully put you on that X Games podium out here at Axel Hodges Slay Ground. Already seeing great commitment out of Luke. Going up to the super kicker right here. Massive double flip. Little squirrely on the landing there, but I mean, you know, I don't think the judges are going to dock much after seeing what we saw. They just, just get through a run. Everything he's done so far has been really good. First guy to utilize the quarter. I was just about to say, we have not seen that quarter pipe come into play here. So throwing the flare into the mix with just under 30 seconds left to go here for Luke. Awesome to see the flare, but you can see the quarter pipe kind of shoots him off the side of the course there, and he's losing a lot of time right here. I mean, he's got he's going to have to make up for a little bit. I want to see a little more charge out of him. Nice knack, double backflip. You see his levers are up there. That, that'll that keep him on the bike. He did that with the, the KOD flip earlier. Can he get back under power and squeeze in one more? It'll be interesting to see if this last one counts. But again, you got double backflip and a double backflip combo in this run. A really nice flat 360. These are all after time here. Ooh. A little messy on the landing there, but that was our uh, first pretty complete run with a lot of gnarly tricks. Look at the three right there. That. I can't tell you how hard that is. Those bikes don't spin that easy. That's just pure muscle out of Luke. And, and like I said, the flattest three in the business right now. Look at the extension there. Yeah. And I want to talk about, too, those ramps going back down like that, they're blind. You know, you're going up to the ramp, and you can't see a landing. It's all downhill, like kind of step down. And, and so for him to commit on that kiss of death flip, so pretty we, amazing. We mentioned first to use the quarter pipe. However, coming out of that kind of spits you into a weird area, and you have to get quick to reset to line back up for another hit. Yeah, such a give and take there. You know, you, you do get lose a little bit of time, but the judges might also reward using that quarter pipe as well. Well, they definitely did. He's the first rider to score into the 90s. The best possible run score you can get is 100, and Luke Ackerman finds himself at the top of the leaderboard with a 92.33. So that is an excellent first run. For Luke Ackerman right there, we've gone through four riders in the rotation here in round number one. There's still four more riders to go. It's Luke Ackerman that's sitting in that top spot. 
as of right now as we get set to take a little bit of a break and we will come back with the conclusion of round number one here in Moto X Freestyle. But wait, we're not actually going anywhere. We're just teasing you guys. This one is being brought to you commercial free by our friends over at Monster Energy. So the party keeps on rolling here, Mike Mason. I like it. I'm just getting going. I'm ready to watch some more freestyle. So is everybody else that is everybody else that is lucky enough to attend in person out here at Axel Hodges Sleigh Ground. So Luke Ackerman in that top spot. We move on to Taka Higashino out of Japan. He has three X Games Freestyle Gold. The only other rider than Travis Pastrana to win X Games Freestyle Gold more than twice. He has five X Games medals total. And he was actually the first Japanese Moto X competitor to win gold in the next games when he got his first gold medal in 2012 in freestyle. There's the first rider to hit our 105 ramp. As you can see, how much more commitment that takes. He has to shift third off the first double. I believe he did a rock solid flip there. I couldn't really catch it all, but still a nice double double. Indy flip. And, and this is why Taco was my sleeper yesterday. He came out, and this is how he looked right when practice started. Some of the guys were struggling to figure out the course a little bit, and Taco's got a good line going. Misses the ramp right there. I think. Looks like that was planned, but I would have liked to see him hit that and kind of keep the flow going. There's Taka throwing a clean body varial in the mix here as he's working his way towards the 30-second mark. You know, and, and Taka has the experience. Some of these guys haven't ridden a course like this, and when you got to throw hard tricks, the hard tricks usually weigh into your mind more than having to uh, plan out a run. So watching Taka kind of flow around this course, you can definitely see that he's been around a long time. Nice no-handed flip coming in. He's landing everything real smooth, too, which is what I like. I'm sure the judges will reward that a bit. Coming down to the final 10 seconds here, probably be able to squeeze in one up more hit here. Luke Ackerman, your current leader with a 92.33. And he's actually going to squeeze in two more. So Taka lining up and ended on the Cordova flip right there. And that is going to do it for Japan's Taka Higashino. Yeah, awesome first run there. I'm sure Taka has a little more. I think he's still double back flipping. But like I said, these guys haven't competed in so long. Get that first run out of the way. Get the nerves out of the way. And then you can let it all ride in the second run. As you can see there, he had to heel clicker flip and actually click third going up to the 105 ramp. Here's the blind ramp I was talking about where these guys just full commitment, you know, jumping down the hill. I love seeing this course, man. It's, it's given the guys so much more options. It's given us as viewers more to look at than, you know, your, your basic circle track. So it's fun to watch these guys dissect the course a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, being outside, you've got a lot more options. And I mean, just that, you know, having to go out there and think about it. And put, you talked about use of course earlier on and some time management for some of the guys that we've seen prior. So Taka is going to check in with an 87.33. So that'll put him in podium contention as of right now, just behind David Ronaldo. So again, this is being brought to you commercial free by our friends over at Monster Energy here at Moto X Freestyle. Taking a look at Jackson Strong right here. He's been extremely dominant when it comes to best trick competitions, but he has never found himself in freestyle gold before. Could this possibly be the year, Mike? Five freestyle starts and no gold for Jackson Strong. I sure hope it is. You know, I want to see Jacko attack this course. I've never really got to see Jacko ride a, a full-blown course like this, starting off with a nice cliffhanger. Once again, start with, uh, and there's, there's a missed jump already. Um, it, this course is hard for these guys, you know, and here's a lot of wasted time. I mean, I want to see Jacko attack this course. I know he has all the tricks to win. I just want to see him put it all together on this course. What does that do to your mindset when you have a slip up right out of the gate? I mean, how bad? I mean, yes, it's a physical game, but there's also a mental aspect to it as well. There. Massive front flip down the hill. Yeah, it's, it's hard when you start with a mess up because it kind of throws your, you can see right now, he almost looks a little lost. You know, you want to get a run going. If you do mess up in the middle, rebound, you know, have the judges see what they say, but right now he just kind of looks like he's lost and just trying to maybe practice for run number two. Yeah, just kind of throws off the whole cadence of just going through the motions in his head right here, using this as a dry run. Remember, two runs, it's the best run of your two that counts, so he knows that those judges are looking for perfection with the slip up right out of the gate. And with all due respect, you know, these guys started early this morning. They really only got a, a five minute warm up to get on the course. I mean, they practiced yesterday, but you know, we're used to in our backyards, we go out and you, you know, you ride for 30 minutes and then start going through all your hard tricks and, and kind of work from there. But five minutes on this course, you know, first thing in the morning, that's going to be pretty tough for these boys. Yeah, it's definitely an early one to be out here throwing your hardest tricks in a 75 second run. So that is going to do it right there for Jackson Strong. So we will 
see him in round number two. He is a six-time X Games Moto X Best Trick gold medalist, but as we mentioned before, freestyle has eluded him over the years. Yeah, right there, he started off with a good cliffhanger, and I, you know, I don't know if he was going for the 105 ramp, and that's why he maybe backed out, but quick thinking he could have easily went left or right, got a 75 in there, and kind of kept his run going, but I think that kind of threw his whole run off. He got a little lost. So go ahead and shake that one off. He's got a little bit of time to kind of walk through this one in his mind and uh, hopefully make that happen in that second and final run. As we move on, three, excuse me, two riders left to go here in the run order. Another Australian, this is Josh Sheehan. He took freestyle gold, but last year it was contested at X Games Austin back in 2016. And Josh Sheehan is an absolute powerhouse. Yeah, Sheehan's one of those guys I really feel like he can attack this course. He did look great as well yesterday. Nice no-handed Superman into a three. That's a good combo. You know, pack both those jumps in there. Maximize your time right here. Huge kiss of death flip coming back down the hill. You can see him adjusting those levers up for the KOD flip down to, to line up what maybe a double flip. And you call it. Here it comes once, twice around. So puts that one down. I mean, it's, he makes those look effortless. He really does. You know, and here we go again using the using the quarter, getting the flare in. Boosted that flare off that quarter. That was a nice little combo yeah. right there. Yeah, awesome combo. Really trying to get back to that ramp, but see, he, he didn't waste time there. He gets right back into it. And that's what I'm talking about. Like a whip in a, in a today's freestyle run might not be classified as a huge trick, but he's, he's maximizing efficiency. You know, he kind of probably had to improvise a little bit there when he spun around and, and just keep it going, man. The judges are going to be looking for full runs here. That's the thing. You don't see a lot of time wasted there. He gets reset quickly. He's trying to maximize to get as many jumps as he can in here in that 75 seconds. We're down to the final five here. So he's lining up for what will be his last attempt. Nice double back variation there. I really like what Sheeny did. You know, he's a smart rider. He's been around a long time. He probably saw some of the guy's first runs and kind of understood what he had to do. You know, get out there, throw run one down, and then in run two, he can throw out a lot more. Maybe not do that in run two. Right? Well, that one's after time. That, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the good news. That, that one was for everybody over there at Athlete Staging. But I like use of course. I like this run. He, he pieced it together well. Cool to see some, you know, old school tricks in there, the no-handed Superman. Not a lot of guys still do that to this day, so. Cool, cool angle of the double backflip right there. These guys are insane. You know, they make it look so easy now. Check out the pop that he gets right here on the flare. And after that, he gets a quick reset to line up for his next hit. Huge lazy boy flip right there. Those still scare me to this day. I know they're an older flip trick, but I believe that was over the 105 as well. So I was going to say that was over the big gap. Yeah, anything over the big gap, I think, deserves a little extra credit. So he's going to settle for an 89.66. So no one's been able to best that Luke Ackerman score. So right now, your top three, it's Luke Ackerman, Josh Sheehan, and David Ronaldo. Now slides to third. Taka Higashino drops down to fourth right there. So things are heating up here. I think it's uh, there's some pressure on Rob right now. He was confident yesterday. You know, he looked great, and uh, he knows he can win this thing. Well, next up, you've got your defending gold medalist from Minneapolis, Rob Rattleberg. But before we drop him, let's learn a little bit more about him. Good morning. Hi, I'm Rob Rattleberg. I'm from Benalla in Australia, and I ride freestyle motocross. This is my humble abode. I've got 50 acres here, and I'm a bit of a country boy, so it feels good to be back in the country. While COVID was around and there was no events, I decided to buy a skid steer and get into the earth moving game. It was okay, I made a little bit of money, but it's not where my passion is, so I'm so stoked now we have these events coming back. I can finally get back into what I love. Yes, I've been working on a new combo with the front flip, finally back competing on the world stage. The biggest thing I miss about X Games is the pressure. The pressure I put on myself. The pressure to just yeah, be at the top of the sport. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, he comes into this year defending gold medalist from Minneapolis. I said that it took nine attempts to get that gold. That was his first freestyle gold. He had a couple of gold medals, uh, one in Moto X best trick, and he had two in snow bike best trick, but that was his first freestyle gold, and he is in for his first of two attempts here. Yeah, I really want to see Rob navigate this course. He looked so good in practice yesterday. Hung up a little on a burial there. That's that's not going to hurt him, though. He'll, he'll keep it together. And 
Yeah, he's got a minute left. He had left ankle surgery at the beginning of the pandemic and was off the bike for close to 12 months. Oh, man, look at that. And, and I've been trying to explain it. It's so hard to tell you guys how scary that ramp is looking because, you know, the ramp's 10 feet taller than the, than the landing. So you're stepping down back into the valley, can't really see nothing, going blind. And when you're front flipping, you can't see nothing anyway. So he's really just committing on that one. Coming up on 30 seconds left here for Rob Adelberg. Still Luke Ackerman in the top spot with a 92.33. Couple mess ups there. That I, I'm telling you, these guys aren't used to these courses. It's been a long time since we've had a full course, and you know you're outdoors. There's there's glares on the ramp. There could be a little breeze we don't know of, and you know it's going to give these guys fits. That's why I was kind of saying earlier in the broadcast. I think the guy who can and sticks somewhat of a solid run got, has a good chance here. It looks like he's waving off the rest of this run. You don't see any urgency here. Well, nope. He's going to call it right there as time winds down. So a couple of slip ups there for Rob. So he too going to have to get it done in that second final run. And you can see him kind of rehearsing his varial there. I don't know if maybe that that first little slip up, even though it wasn't massive, maybe it just got in his head a little bit threw him off his rhythm. Here you can see you're reaching back to the seat, throws his feet through the bars, grabs his grab again foot just hung up on the side plate a little bit, but I don't think it was enough to, to really damage the confidence at all. And then right here, it kind of started going south a little bit. The straight back flip's not going not gonna to get you very far in 2021. So he'll settle for a 73. So your defending champ at the end of round one finds himself in that number six position. But how about Luke Ackerman with a 92.33, followed by Josh Ian and David Ronaldo. That is your one, two, three as of right now. However, round one is in the books. We still have round two to go here at Moto X Freestyle being brought to you by our friends at Monster Energy. Take another look at your current leader here. Luke Ackerman with that 92.33. Who's going to get the gold here? We'll find out when we come back here to Moto X Freestyle. Jackson Strong it is in the X Games mode, and we are trending on TikTok to all of our fans out there. If you want to join in, check out the X Games mode hashtag challenge and show us what happens when you're on X Games mode. So some shots of Jacko having a good time out here in practice earlier in the week. Taking a look at him right there. Had a little bit of a slip up there in that first run, so we look to see more of him here in round number two. But you see by that sweeping shot right there, it just gives you an idea of the scope and size of this course out here at Slayground, Mike. Yeah, this course is awesome, and, and as we can see, it's testing the rider's ability to, to the tee. You know, it's going to be the guy that's the most consistent right now. Well, we have not heard for, from Jack Matrani yet. Let's check in with him right now. Jack, how are the uh, riders feeling after that first round of runs? Well, I've been down here from practice, hanging out, and basically what, I'm, what i got to say is that the nerves are real. It's been the first time in a long time since they've competed. Since they've competed. There you guys are. And so, yeah, the nerves are real, and from what I've heard, they haven't had too much time to practice. They flew in from Australia, maybe a little jet lag. And so, look, if you haven't competed in a long time, that first run is intense. There's a lot of nerves, and so I think the first run, they shook the nerves off a little bit. Had to get the first one out of the way, and I think I'm optimistic about run number two, but the vibe is intense right now. That's all I got to say. It's been pretty nerve-wracking just even hanging around these guys. What they're going through right now is serious. It's gnarly, so respect to all these guys. Let's hope they put it down in run number two. Yeah, and that goes back to what you were talking about, or we were both talking about earlier, Mike, with you know just what goes into traveling over here just to compete at this and just all the gear that you've got to haul over here, the jet lag, the practice. And then on top of that, when these guys go home to Australia, they have to quarantine for 14 days when they get back to their home country. Yeah, there's a lot going on right now with the travel and, you know, and then you add the pressure of X Games. Like, that's already pressure. And then, you know, you add all this stuff. They haven't got to compete in X Games in two years. And, 
and you can see it uh, working its magic right now on the riders. Well, you mentioned this earlier, talking about the oval courses that we typically have in the past when we're inside the stadiums and whatnot. Let's talk about the different features and some of the ramps that uh, they were able to put outside here on a much bigger outdoor course. Yeah, I, like I said, I like this. This is an old school course. You can see three ramp options right there, and you're coming off a, of a double in. So it's sometimes, like we saw Jacko, he might have landed and wanted one ramp lined up, and he was off to the side or something and had to, to back out of it. And, you know, you get the, the Minneapolis courses where it's kind of a circle track. You have your super kicker right there, the shorter ramp for the ba double backflips. But out here, you have multiple options, and you really have to think of all your tricks, think of the, the order you want them in, and then if you do mess up one of your jumps coming into those ramps, that's when your run can uh, really go stale quick. Yeah, and that goes into that whole use of course situation that we were talking about earlier. I mean, you think 75 seconds, it's a lot of time, but once you come outside, I mean, that, that's a whole different ball game right there and how you plan out your run. Yeah, definitely. And, and like I said too, this is something that gets overlooked a lot is, you know, the sun's kind of coming up over those, those ramps, jumping over the quarter pipe. So some of these guys might be looking at basically like a black wall. You can't see the transition, can't really see the top of the ramp. And, you know, we have seen some mess ups on those ramps going that way. So that could play, play a factor into their runs. Taking a look at Rob Adelberg there, talking things over with David Ronaldo. David Ronaldo sitting in a bronze medal position as of right now. So that is your freestyle gold medalist and your best trick gold medalist from X Games Minneapolis. Standing right there having a chat. But here we go. We go back up to the top of the order, Mike. We go into round two. Remember, it's two runs, best run that counts. X Games rookie here. This is Benny Richards out of Australia. And uh, he went for it right out of the gate there on that first trick and got a little stacked up there. It was able to get up and walk away. So looking to shake this one off. Put something together here in round number two. So X Games rookie, Benny Richards, coming back into the mix. He had a crash in that first run. Looking for redemption here in round number two. Oh, that jumps again. He's got it. He saved it. I really want to see Benny just throw down a good run here. I don't care if, it, if it's a life-changing run, but this is his first X Games. This is what X Games does to you right here. And of course, his first X Games is one of our gnarliest courses we've had in probably the last six years. So poor dude's got his work cut out for him. I mean, that was two saves in a row right there. And freestyle is so weird. It's, you know, I did it for so long, it kind of became second nature to me at the end. But I remember my first runs. It was like, you're confident, you're at home, you're practicing, everything's smooth. But then all of a sudden, the starter tells you to go. And it's like, everything's happening at warp speed. You know, the ramps are coming up quick, everything. and. His boys are stopping him now. Don't know if it's a bike issue, maybe a rear flat or something. He did hit, yeah, a rear oh, flat. Yeah. yeah, that's probably from uh, uh, coming up short a couple times. And that's a bummer, but this is a good first experience for him. He's going to have a lot to go on back to Australia and work on. I know he works with Jacko a lot. And I'd like to see him back next year. I know he's got the tricks to, to make it happen. Yeah, Jackson was out there flagging him down right off the bat, telling him to cut that one short right there. But again, you know, like you were talking about, I mean, coming out here, it's your first time ever at the X Games, and the nerves are definitely a factor, and come bouncing back after that big first crash. Yeah. And, you know, this is, this is proof of the nerves. That's just your standard 75-foot comp ramp. You know, these guys hit that every day. But like I said, when the starter tells you to go and you got to roll in, sometimes you're thinking so much about the trick and, and the moment of being in X Games, there's cameras around, there's a drone flying over his head there. And <laughs> next thing you know, you're going off the ramp and you know you're not making it. Nice Cordova flip there, but just, just had an issue with getting over the, the jumps right now, you know? And, and these ramps are a little bit different than Aussie comp ramps, so maybe it was, he was a little out of his element. So tough break there for Benny, but uh, maybe we'll see him in the future here in X Games competitions here in Moto X Freestyle. So we're being told that uh, David Ronaldo and Harry Mink are not taking their second runs. So that brings us up to your current leader, Luke Ackerman. Said earlier he missed Minneapolis in 2019 with an injury. So looking strong here. Only rider to score in the 90s thus far here at the sleigh ground in Moto X Freestyle. Oh. Whoa, <laughs> like, like I said, you know, Luke's a loose cannon. He's so much fun to watch. He's young. He goes for it. Um, I'm stoked he's still throwing down a run right here. You always want to, huh? what does I say that, you e sailors? Uh, maybe hurt his wrist a little bit. But, you know, when you have a first run out of the way, you, it kind of you can just relax for your second run and go for it. But uh, he might have, something oh. happened on that three there, and he's probably going to be done favoring that left wrist for sure right there. But yeah, again, you know, with that solid first run score of 92.33, and given what we've seen here, I mean, and, you know, just had two guys drop out of round number two. Yeah, my thing is, though, is you, you always want to push it because, you know, Rob and Jacko messed up. I think Taka has a little more in the tank as well. And 
you know, you want to up that score as much as you can, but if it's an injury, there's not much you can do there as he jumps everything one-handed. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you think you just call it quits right there, but no, he's just going to go through an entire run and land one-handed. <laughs> Maybe the judges will give him a couple extra points for that. Either way, a great performance. Missing Minneapolis in 2019, so he's really been out of X Games for almost three years, you know, to, to come out and be on top of the leaderboard. And by the way, just throwing this out there, no rider from Germany has uh, medaled in a freestyle Moto X discipline before. I think he's looking pretty good for a medal. I think he's looking really good for a gold. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be up to these next couple riders here to throw down runs and, and get up there and compete with them. So tough break there for Luke Ackerman. However, with a first run score of 92.33, he's still in that top spot. So we're halfway through the run order here in round number two with some riders dropping out of the field. However, we still have Jackson Strong and Rob Adelberg still to go. Who is walking out of Slay Ground with X Games Moto X Gold? We'll find out when we come back. Geico Music Mix giving us a look at everything happening here at X Games. Here in Moto X Freestyle, though, at Axel Hodges Slayground, we've had a, a rough go here. Looking at Benny Richards there taking a crash in his first run there. It's Luke Ackerman sitting in that top spot as of right now. We saw Harry Bink kind of launch off course there into the weeds, Mike. Yeah, Harry had a rough go of it. And you know, a lot of these guys are having a rough go, but there's a couple riders out there sticking runs, and we've got a couple of heavy hitter hitters that still need to prove themselves. So you had Harry Bink and David Ronaldo had dropped out of round number two. Like I mentioned, Luke Ackerman, your current leader, with a 92.33, followed by Josh Sheehan and David Ronaldo. But we're down to our final four here. You've still got Taka Higashino, Jackson Strong, Josh Sheehan, and your defending gold medalist from Minneapolis in 2019, Rob Adelberg, yet to go. So it is far from over out here at Moto X Freestyle. But again, I mean, just look at where we're at out here. Yeah, what a beautiful piece of property, you know. And they've done such a great job converting this into a freestyle course. I mean, there's probably so many options. It was hard for the course designers to, to figure out where they wanted to go with all this. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, this is t almost twice as big as what we had uh, in Minneapolis in 2019. But great job to these guys and the job that they've done. And what, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better setting out here for Moto X Freestyle. But we welcome back in Taka Higashino for his second and final run. Yeah, Taka coming out solid again. That was a rock solid backflip over the 105 footer. I can't tell you how scary that is. I mean, you're hitting that thing third gear pretty much wide open, and to do a rock solid backflip, he's he's going for it. A little little mess up on the indie flip there, but I think Taka can can still prove himself here. Well, he's just outside of the podium right now. He's got an 87.33. I mean, he's knocking on the door of David Ronaldo. You need an 88.33 or better if you're going to jump into that top three. <laughs> Good burial there. He looks great. I just, I, I want to see a little more intensity on him. He keeps kind of turning at the bottom of that ramp. He is getting the 75 back in, but, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe the judges are kind of looking for flow around the course, and when you're kind of taking your time and, and, and dodging a jump, you know, it's just kind of got to maximize everything. He's, he's riding great, though, Taka. You know, like I said in the first run, he's a... He's an experienced rider. He's out here. He's not messing up like some of the other guys have. Almost getting a cameraman there. Well, you can see the pace is hurried here with this last bit of time here. Coming down to just under 10 seconds left to go here. It looks like he's going to pretty much do the same run as run number one. I did see the one little mess up with the indie flip. I don't know if the judges take that into consideration. I don't think this will pop him into the top three, but a great ride. You know, he's always that solid guy. So that last hit there after time, but two solid performances out here at Axel Hodges. Slayer out by Taka Higashino. Let's take another look. 
Nice heel click. I know heel clicker flips are a thing of the past, but when you're going into a double double, and right here he's shifting third and setting up, you gotta gotta kind of make sure you're set back on the bike. And, and there's what I was talking about. Not the greatest extension there. That that will probably hurt his score a little bit. Shaolin flip there, using those flip levers to, to keep him on the bike so he doesn't go off the front. Huge Cordova flip over the 105. I like how he did utilize the 105 a lot. That's cool because it is a newer ramp and you can tell some of the guys are kind of trying to avoid it. So for him to hit it twice in his run, uh, I think that was some bonus points. It looks like he's going to stick with that 87.33. So still Ackerman, Sheehan, Ronaldo. You're one, two, three as of right now. Our final three left to go here. One of those guys in the podium as of right now. Two of them on the outside looking in. We've got Jackson Strong coming your way right now. He had that slip up there in that first run and it kind of threw him off his cadence. Can he put it together here in this second final run? He overjumped that first ramp there and it kind of threw him off. You can see his head move a little bit. And Going for the 105 though, you know, he still went for it. He knows this is his run. It doesn't matter if he has a little slip up there. He's got the front flips in the bag. Just get a clean run out, get a score, try and, you know, get in that top three. I think if he, he pushes through this run, he could pass Ronaldo. Um, maybe Sheeny, we'll have to see, but that's, that's not gonna cut it there. Yeah, with the double can there, and looks again, just slowing things down right here with just under 40 seconds left to go. Man, I wanted this so bad for Jacko too because this is this is the run that kind of proves your worth. You know, the, the course is hard. Everyone's struggling on the course, as you can see. It's not like it's just Jacko that's having a hard time with it. You know, every rider's had their issues with it, but it's the guy that can persevere the best, kind of put the best run together. And right now, that's Luke Ackerman. So we're down to the final 15 seconds. His first run score rate is 63.66. Got him down in seventh place. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing with, with judging is, you know, people might wonder what separates Luke from Sheeny from Ronaldo, and it's, you know, Luke, he's not front flipping, but he had two double back flips in his run. He had a, one of the flattest 360s we'll probably ever see. He used the course pretty well, minus the 105, and, and I think that's why he's sitting up front right now. He had a good little combination of everything. Right there, you can see the over jump just threw him off his timing a little bit. Here he's going with the Mike Mason 2009 run. Well, actually, I did that in 2018, too, I can't lie, but... That kind of made me proud. I had a proud just, moment. Did you just give yourself a plug right there? I had to. It was the one time in the broadcast. I'm not knocking it, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's, you know, when you start your run with those little mess ups, like we said earlier, it's the, the end mess ups and the middle mess ups you can get away with, but starting it just kind of throws you throws your confidence all off. So not the runs that he wanted here in freestyle. However, he still has best trick yet to go. We're down to our final two riders, Josh Sheehan. You see his uh, hardware count right there. He has 11 at total. Moto X, X Games medals. He, uh, you see that freestyle gold and three silver. That freestyle gold goes back to X Games Austin in 2016. He's looking at a silver medal as of right now. I love Sheeny's first run. I think it was the perfect first run to get him into second and take, you know, take some of the weight off his shoulders. I think he's gonna, he's gonna really go for it here and go for that gold. Yeah, he's got the skills to do it. He's medaled in both best trick and freestyle at the same event on three different occasions. Did it in Minneapolis 2019, Sydney 2018, as well as Austin 2016 when he got that freestyle goal. Right there, throwing a nice three. You can see the difference. His three was a little more off axis, where Luke's is just flat, but they're the only two guys out here three in right now, so that's saying something with how hard that trick actually is. Another massive kiss of death flip, getting those levers set up. He just, he has such great extension. I mean, he gets so far off the bike. You know, he has he has great extension and he has a lot of confidence. You can see him, he doesn't look lost in his run. He doesn't look, you know, notchy. He's going good, he's hitting everything he wants. He's using that quarter, one of two riders to use it. I don't think the judges would penalize him for, you know, maybe taking a little bit of time right here. That's awesome that he's using pretty much every feature on the course. 30 seconds left to go. He had that 89.66 first go around that put him in that number two spot. David Ronaldo still holding on to the bronze spot as of right now with one rider left to go after Josh here. Yeah, and you can just tell Josh is he's comfortable in this course. And he was one of the guys yesterday that said it was kind of confusing him too. It's it's not like he's superior to the other guys. It was messing with all of them, but that's what I'm saying. Is when the when the starter tells you to go, it's whoever can just zone into that mentally the best and, and put together a complete run. So there is the buzzer. 
Ooh. Yeah, but a foot there, but that one. It's almost a little over rotate on the double flip. You don't see that too often. Ooh. That was after time or not. Once again, loved his run. Good variety. Had some right side up tricks in there, some huge flip tricks, the 360, the double bags. I, I'm going to guess scores pretty similar to first run. I didn't see too much that would, would differentiate each run, but you know, he, he looked great. One of the few riders right now putting a full run down on this course. Good pop on that flare, traversed across the quarter by landing. I can't tell you how good him and Luke probably feel right now, too, just knowing that those runs are done, because I know these guys were pretty stressed, and then five-minute warm-up going into the contest this morning is probably weighing on all of them. Well, with one rider left to go, we know that Luke Ackerman's going to get a medal. We know that Josh Sheehan's going to get a medal. David Ronaldo sits in the bubble. Your defending champ from Minneapolis 2019. He is the last rider to go. He finds himself in the number six position. It all comes down to this final 75 seconds for Rob Adelberg. Rob's just got to believe in himself right here. He has all the tricks. He, he knows he has the run. Get that varial off clean. That's one trick that's probably weighing on his mind. And now just let her rip, man. He's got it. Yeah, just a little rough on that one in the first run. He's, he's past that stage here in round two. Huge front flip coming down the hill. You know, there's there's probably only a handful of tricks that he knows he has to stick, and so far he's stuck both of them. The front flip, the very old. That ramp's been giving him a little bit of fits there. I don't know what's going on with that. I know it's a little uphill, and they didn't get much time on it. They had to kind of rework that part of the course, so could be messing with him just a tad. Awesome link right there. Kiss of death flip into a uh, indie flip, heel clicker. You know, that's pretty hard. He's linking two combos together, shifting gears, and hitting the 105 foot ramp. Front flip, no hander, second front flip in his run. Good. Front flip combo there at the 15 second mark here for Rob Adelberg. Again, you got David Ronaldo on that bubble spot. Rob sitting at six pre run. If I had to guess, I think this is probably going to knock Dave off, even with the, the straight back flip. Huge cliffhanger flip right there. That, everything has been perfect, except for just a straight flip in his run. That might be the difference between second and third. I think Luke might still have a lock on this, but stoked for Rob to put down a run on, the, on this course. These guys, like I said, aren't used to it. The last three to four years, they've just kind of had a circle track. So this one definitely weighed into him a little bit. Nice front flip, Matt coming back down the hill to end his run. And there we go. You can see he's excited. Right there, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. He's almost jumping back down in the valley, and with the front flip, you can't see as it is. So he's just going off pure trust that, that he has that trick dialed. Huge kiss of death flip, which you won't expect this to be that gnarly, but going into a double-double like that, he has to land this perfect. He has to get into third and then hit the 105-foot ramp. Right here, 105-foot ramp, third gear pin. Nice indie to heel click combo. That little three and one combo there at the end of that line. Yeah. That was a great run for Rob. I'm, I'm stoked he put it all together. One little mess up, which could be the difference in score, but I mean, that's got to feel good for him. Well, it's going to bounce out that 73 that's got him down in six for sure. That is your current leader there, Luke Ackerman. What is it going to be here for Mr. Adelberg in the second and final run score? And it is going to get him an 89.33. That's going to bounce David Ronaldo out. Rob Adelberg is going to make it onto the podium. He's going to get a bronze. But that means that gentleman right there, Luke Ackerman, is going to walk out of here with Moto X Freestyle Gold, the first German to ever medal in Moto X at all in any discipline here at X Games. So a big day there for Luke Ackerman. Josh Sheehan with the silver, Rob Adelberg walking out of here with the bronze. Let's take a look back at Luke's first run here, Mike. Yeah, what an awesome run. You know, like I know yesterday he was really struggling on the course. This is a way bigger course than he's ever been used to seeing. And he came out, first run, stuck everything clean and rode perfect, man. I'm stoked for him. So a big day for the German rider. Let's send it down to Jack Matrani right now. Luke, congratulations, your first gold medal, first gold medal for Germany. How big is this moment for you? You know, I've been dreaming all my life to get X Games gold, and uh, I've had a hard crash on Monday, and I was really so on. Uh, um, I wasn't even uh, yeah, thinking to ride here because I was really in pain. My shoulder was so in pain, and uh, yeah, the first one worked out so great, and I just can't describe it. 
We're so excited for you. What was it like riding out back in the elements, not under the stadium in Minneapolis? It looked like a lot of people were struggling out here, but not you, man. You were holding it down. You know, um, this place is insane. You know, it's just an, another, another level. Um, we don't have something like this in Europe. And it was kind of tough for us Europeans, for David and me, uh, to ride here. And um, yeah, I just can't descri describe how good it feels to ride here. And I had so much fun. And uh, it just. Um, it's amazing. Thank you. So much respect. We're so happy for you, Luke Ackerman. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Sending it back to you guys. Yes! Woo! Well, how about all that, Mace? After a big crash on Monday, still comes out here in that first round and puts down a score in the 90s to walk out of here with gold. Yeah, it's awesome. And you can just see how much this meant to him. You know, he's been working really hard. He had all the tricks to do it. This is the one course where I might not have picked Luke just because of the, how big it was, but he came out and stuck that run, man. Good job on the gold. Well, that's a wrap for Moto X Freestyle here at the Slay Ground. Some slip ups here, but again, it's been a long time since we've been outside. Your final thoughts on the course here, Mike? Awesome course. You could see it. some of the riders struggled with it. Limited practice, but you know, I think some of the best riders showed what they had today. So Rob Adelberg gets it done in round two with the bronze. Josh Ian with the silver, but Luke Ackerman takes home X Games gold.